Welcome to Fresh Off the Set. I'm Carrie Hawker Diaz. And I'm David Osmond. Welcome. Thank you for listening today, everyone. Hopefully, you're having a wonderful day. Today's topic is technology and kids. Wow. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It's tough. It is tough. It's really tough. Do you guys have rules with screen time and your own kids, David? Well, you're talking to a guy that was addicted to Nintendo when I was a kid, <laughs> so everything was, you know, Zelda and everything. Yeah. Uh, but the the game has changed mm -hmm. with with the handheld devices, the iPhones, the iPads, everything is just, our kids are being bombarded. And my wife and I, we are those parents. We are those kind of parents that really have made a conscientious, no, I can't, it's a hard word, conscientious effort to shut the screens off and make wise choices. And it's not just putting filters on an internet browser. It's truly about shutting it off and, and, and making moments of, of real life, mm -hmm. getting away from, from that screen. And th it is, it is an addiction. It is a drug. It is a fix. And our kids, honestly, truly um, have a big, big problem. Totally. I heard someone describe it as taking a banana away from a hungry ape. <laughs> when you take away yeah. the screen from oh, a kid. You know what? Just just, just <laughs> feed that ape Brussels sprouts <laughs> from the get-go. No, no bananas. And you'll be fine. And, and so much be, better. Yeah. You know, uh, a, a phrase my wife and I always said is, only boring people get bored. And kids should be bored. They should get away from this constantly need, needing some stimulation. I need a movie. I need some audio. I need, I need something entertaining me. I need an app. I need... Right. So we really, truly shut our screens off. They're not allowed. And yes, there are moments when it's like, okay, we have that screaming ape. We have to kind of... <laughs> we have to pull a banana out. And it's like, you get two minutes. And so we, we dedicate it and have, have structured screen time as best as we can. As best and try as and give can. our kids every opportunity to get away from those stimulating devices. Absolutely. It, it is an addiction and it is causing, I think, social problems. Well, and if you're a parent that never grew up with screens, I mean, we had video games and things, but if you don't have screens right. yourself, you kind of really don't know how to handle it. And it's it's also ever changing. So I spoke with Katie Nelson, who's a parent consultant. She has a company called Fully Nested, and she gave, gave us some great tips on how to navigate screen time with kids. Let's take a listen. I am so excited to introduce to you our podcast guest of the day for our Fresh Off the Set podcast. It is Katie Nelson. She's a parent consultant. I have so many questions, and I know you out there will have the same questions probably too, so let's get going. Katie, thanks for joining us. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm so happy to be here. You're, hel you're helping us with our sanity as being a parent. <laughs> I, I really appreciate you talking with us about these different subjects. So we're going to be going over limiting screen time, being disappointed is okay, teaching our kids that, and it's never early or too late to increase peace within our home. So let's start with, um, tell us a little bit more about your background and how you've been able to help Utah families and what you love about it. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I've been a parent consultant since 2006. I've been teaching in-person positive parenting classes, and I have had the opportunity to help parents with children of all ages from birth to adult children. And it has been such a rewarding experience. And I was an independent facilitator for a different positive parenting program for about 12 years. And during that time, there was a lot of great information, but I just saw some holes. And my husband just kept encouraging me for 12 years to develop your own curriculum, Aww. write what you know. Go husband. Yes, he is the wind beneath my wings, absolutely. So um, I did that in 2018, I developed my own program. And that's what I'm teaching online now. I have an online course, and I'm helping parents in person as well as online. It takes a team to oh, figure yeah. out how to parent, you know, because there aren't, I mean, there are, if people say there aren't books on it. There are technically books on it, but every child is different, and it's yes. so difficult to navigate in today's world. Speaking of today's world with technology, let's talk about phones and kids. And it is such a touchy subject because as a mom myself, I have a five-year-old, when I would, um, how I pictured myself as I thought I would never hand my child a device because I just wanted to keep them away from that, but I do it all the time. Well, first of all, I want to say don't be so hard on yourself. So we were all perfect parents before we were parents, right? Mm. We had it all figured out what we were and weren't going to do. I remember I said, I'm never going to give my daughter a binky. Like that could affect her speech and I'm, I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> and she came along and within the first day, I realized the one thing that soothed her so well was a binky. Was a binky. And she had a binky. And guess what? She's fine. Yeah. And your daughter is going to be fine. Um, but it is very important to be aware of when we're giving them screens, how often they're interacting with them. The recommendation is up to, um, well, 
by five-year-olds, they, they can have a screen for a portion of the day, no more than an hour is the recommendation okay. right now. Um, recommendations have been changing recently because I think people do realize screens are going to be a part of our life. Yeah. Um, but really monitoring that, um, I've heard parents talk handing over an iPad and say referring to it as the babysitter. So we don't want to get there where we just give them unlimited access to screens mm -hmm. and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because of development. And within the first five years of their life is so much brain development. And their um, executive functions are getting built. And it's very important that they have free play and other opportunities that do not involve a screen because then they are more of a passive learner instead of an active learner. Because they're so focused on the screen, yeah. maybe not paying attention to what's yeah. going on around them. And it's not to say that you don't give screen and it's an educational experience. Like, it can be an educational experience, but it's just different watching it versus moving their hands and playing with a puzzle or something, um, mm -hmm. interactive with imaginative toys, and just having things Play-Doh or kinetic sand, something where their brain and their hands are working together and they're being a hands-on learner rather than a passive learner. So it's okay in moderation. In moderation. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Now, when we say screen time, do we include the television? Does that include a screen? Yes, it does. Uh, but I will say, I have heard um, physical therapists, OTs, talk about how they would rather a child be sitting up watching a television versus bent over looking at a screen. It literally is impacting physical development and how our spine is growing. <gasps> I didn't think about that. Yeah, so TV is actually a little bit better than always looking the way their body is functioned and looking down at a screen if it's ha a handheld device. Um, but yes, and they're saying like about an hour a day for children, that includes um, handheld screens as well as television, and then about three hours on the weekend for the age of your child. Per day. Per, per day. Uh, per, well, and the weekend would be weekend day. Would weekend. Be three hours and then an hour a day. And it's not like, oh, try to hit that. There might be days where <laughs> maybe they have no screens, right? Which is great. Yeah. If you can get through yeah. that mentally, amen. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, that's amazing. Right, right. Um, how early are they suggesting that we introduce this or not introduce this to our children? They're saying about 18 to 24 months is the appropriate time and for younger ch for that very young age if it's um, a screen where they're interacting with someone like facetiming a loved one mm -hmm. or something but i remember my daughter's 16 now and i remember when she was about that age and just baby einstein was the thing and i would let her watch like 30 <laughs> minutes 30 yeah. minutes of baby einstein and um but just not relying on the screen as the babysitter really understanding how important the development is and the opportunities for speech, um, language development, to give them other access to more open-ended play. It is addictive, and it we is. all know it as adults. Every We're always age. checking our phones, and for, even for kids. Is it dangerous, okay. do you think, to build that addiction with them too? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If we, if we as the parents, do not set the limits, it, it's very addictive. It is designed to be addictive. Yeah. And... It, those neural pathways and the dopamine bursts and the compulsion loop that can um, happen, they, they compare that to like gambling wow. and um, drug addiction. Wow. So, and these companies, I mean, we're talking now with older kids, not so much young children, but teenage, school age kids, teenage kids who then get into social media, it's designed to be addictive. Game, games, online games designed to be addictive. Mm -hmm. Well, so. you see with so many school children now it going online you yeah. know especially in the pandemic everything was like you do your class online how do you feel about that it's interesting because I remember when I was at my again my daughter's 16 and when I was at her nine month old appointment I remember my pediatrician talking about limiting screen time and I remember thinking at that time that's kind of odd she's nine months old I'm not yeah. gonna really put her in front of a screen but who would have thought in the last 15 years what has changed in our world. We had the introduction of the iPhone and then the iPad. And like you're talking about in schools, computers are the norm now. Mm -hmm. And so because that has happened, it's even more of a reason to make sure we're limiting screens at home. Sure, because they may be already doing school online. Exactly. And um, when I say it, it affects um, mental and physical development, like we're seeing more um, nearsightedness and texting them and Wait, what's texting thumb? Texting thumb is, I don't know the medical term for it, but my husband does. He could tell you. But it literally is like your thumbs 
Your start thumbs, like, aching. Hurt. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. And problems with vision. Yes. Because yes. You're more kids are in glasses. Yes. Yes. So we know if they're getting more access at school or even if they're at home having access to those screens um, for learning opportunities, we need to make sure that the um, we're setting limits. And it's okay to set limits. I think sometimes parents are afraid to set limits because they're afraid of the disappointment. Sure. But we have to be the adult in this relationship. We have to. And speaking of that, let's talk about limiting limiting screen time because I don't, I imagine with different ages, it's it's fr- different from a four-year-old to Absolutely. from a 10-year-old. How do we go about limiting it and taking it away? Because that's when they go crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And the main thing we need to do as parents is to emotionally prepare ourselves as well as our children. So right before you're about to set this limit with them, you're about to teach the new expectation. Maybe you want to change the expectation. You need to emotionally prepare yourself and let yourself know, my child's going to freak out. They are not going to be happy about this. They're not going to thank me. They're not going to say, oh, thanks for holding me accountable, mom. You're the best. Mm -hmm. Instead, they're going to express disappointment. And when we emotionally prepare ourselves and and count on that, count on the fact they're not going to be happy, we can deal with that better and we can stay calm. And so then we need to teach the expectation. And I just want to let you know, I have four children ranging in ages from 16 to 8 years old. And we have changed our screen time limit multiple times. And you can do that. I think parents think, I think they feel trapped a lot of times. And that screen is kind of driving it and the kids' behavior is driving it. Oh, I better just give it to them and give in or they're going to freak out. It's okay to let them freak out. It's okay. Yep. Let them freak out. Let them be disappointed. Disappointment is a real emotion. They're going to have it for the rest of their life. We're disappointed throughout our lives. And it's okay for them to be disappointed in your home. The key here is to stay calm when you've emotionally prepared yourself and you stay calm. So you let them know. You can give them a choice. Would you like to watch a show right now or in 20 minutes? And then you can even set a physical timer and say, okay, you have 20 minutes. Or let's say it is an hour. Okay, you have an hour with this show. And when it's over, what do we say? Oftentimes as parents, we have expectations, but we forget to teach the expectations. We just have them. We just expect it. We expect them to have good behavior, but it needs to be it needs to be taught yes yeah so that's a good point I really like how you say disappointment is okay I want to hit on that a little bit more because if you're teaching them disappointment is okay with maybe taking away their tablet and they're disappointed you're also teaching them that disappointment in life in general is is fine yeah and it happens it's okay, it's okay to be sad it's okay to be frustrated and you teach them those words you say when you're frustrated you can say that you can say I feel frustrated But we can also, if we're recognizing patterns, if every day you're going to take away the tablet and every day they're freaking out, that isn't a coincidence. That's called a pattern. And so when we see that pattern, we know we need to teach it. So before we give the tablet, before we give that screen time, we talk to them about it before it's even in their hands and we have their attention. Maybe we're having a snack together. And we say, you know, one thing you need to work on as you're growing older is when it's time to be done with your tablet or your screen, that you say okay. So you teach the exact words you want them to say. You say okay, and when you say okay and you hand it to me, that means you get a turn tomorrow. But what if you freak out and you show that disappointment? Now I'm saying disappointment is okay, but I'm not saying we can't teach a new expectation. Right. We can teach the new expectation and help them to have better behavior. Say when you say okay, that means you get a turn next time. And then we have to hold, hold to that. And I've seen that in my own children. I have some who say okay every time and some that don't. And they might need to miss the next day. And as as you're consistent, they learn their behavior improves. And I think you probably need to know that it's going to change all the time, like you said, right? So if you feel like you're on a good roll and you're like, okay, things are going good, they're understanding it, and then one day it's a big problem, doesn't mean that, you know, you can throw everything out the window that you've been teaching them. You just might have a bump in the road. Exactly. Exactly. We all have off days right? Your kids are going to have off days. Adults have off off days. And just giving them grace, giving yourself grace and say, I can see that it's a hard thing. And you could either take the screen away um, the next day or you could implement, you could not let them do something else, have a consequence where, oh, it looks like you need a cleaning consequence. Mm. The baseboards need washed. Everybody Mm. can reach reach the baseboards. That's (laughs) that's true. (laughs) You can. They're they're small. Um, How do you feel about because uh, when we go to the store as parents, we always want to, like, entertain our kids if we have to go handing them 
the tablet, the phone, at the store, and we don't want to be embarrassed if we have to take it away and they cause this big scene. I know you've talked a lot about preparing them before. Yes, you get it. You absolutely get it. Emotionally preparing them before. Again, look for patterns. If you know the store is hard, it's consistently been hard and they consistently um, have behavior there and you're handing them a phone, they're going to count on that when I freak out my mom or dad will give me the phone. If you'd like to change that pattern, you need to teach it before you go to the store, not in the store. Mm. Talk about it before when you're at home and things are comfortable and the store isn't even there and you can let them know we're going to try something. We're going to go to the store and you mentioned your daughter being five years old. So she cognitively could have this conversation. We couldn't have this conversation with a two year old, right? but we can with a five year old and say, we are going to practice going to the store without a phone and we're going to make a list and you just all of a sudden, this turns into a game for them, and it's more fun. I, Mom's going to have her list, and here's your list, and I need you to help find the bananas or the avocados. Katie, this is such a good idea oh. and a good plan. And you can do it. I just want parents to know you are so capable. Parents can do this. They often just need the idea. It's easy to add, hand over the phone, but when you just have think out of the box a little bit, and how can I engage my child? That's the big picture here, I think. How can I engage my child and help them be part of this experience instead of getting through the experience. Um, let's let's engage them. And what's that going to do for them? It's actually going to ha- help their brain development. It's going to help their behavior. It's going to help their language development when you're talking. When I walk through a store, and I mean, I just, I don't want parents, I don't ever want a parent to feel guilty if they've handed their kids a phone in the grocery store. Uh, but I do want to say, parents, you're parenting in a world that you weren't parented in. It's we different. were not raised. We were not raised with access to these handheld devices. And so we were thrown into this, and a lot of parents are backtracking, say, I wish I wouldn't have. I wish I wouldn't have handed over the device so much. And I just don't want them to beat themselves up. Give yourself grace. You're raised in this new world of technology. and But now that more studies are coming out, we're seeing the effects of screens, we're realizing it's important to set limits and um, engage that child rather than just hand them the phone. Sure, sure. Those are really good points, Katie. What about teens? teens? How do we handle that with teens? A little different. Yep, different. And, you know, they have. We, we give more time to teens. We give them more screen time. As the child grows older, they are given more time per day. But if you look at the statistics, it's crazy how much time teens are spending for, for entertainment on phones. It's about seven to nine hours a day wow. that we are. And, and when you really think of that, the missed opportunities. Um, and what are we seeing that's going right along with that increased screen time? We're seeing increased depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, mm-hmm. um, eating disorders. All the studies are showing ever since we've, we've had social media and those um, handheld devices, all of the statistics have gone up in every single one of those areas. Right. And so we know the importance. We know it's important. And when I would teach my po- when I'm teaching my positive parenting classes in person, I have always had parents asking questions or coming up to me after with so much um, how do I describe this? Just like frustration and sadness. Sure. And they just say, you know, I had a good relationship with my kid and my teen until I handed over a phone. And then I feel like I lost a lot of that relationship because it became power struggles over the phone and um, consequences over the phone, taking it away. And that's what our relationship revolved around was the phone. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is my husband and I, again, it wasn't a coincidence. It was a pattern when I just kept seeing these parents who were aching with regret, like I handed it over. I didn't give them enough limits. So we developed phone school and it's a program that teens can go through before they get a phone or if they already have a phone to help them develop healthy habits. And the number one thing here is to help kids know that a phone is a priority, not a right. Or excuse me, not a priority. It is a, um, what is the word I'm looking for? A phone is, oh, it's left me right now. It's fine. A privilege. It's a privilege, not a right. That's it true. It's a privilege to it manage is. your phone. And we need to understand, and one thing we talk about early on with our kids as they're getting closer to the fo- to getting a phone is, are you emotionally mature? And when we can see that you are emotionally mature, then you can have the privilege to manage a phone. It's not a right. It's not like, oh, I'm 14 or I'm 12. I get a phone. It doesn't, we shouldn't assign it with a birthday, with a present. They should show they're emotionally mature, go through phone school, and then they earn the phone and they manage it 
responsibly. That was my next question is what age do you think yeah. is appropriate to hand over a phone? But that makes sense where, you know, a 12, somebody's 12 year old may be a lot more emotionally able to handle it other than somebody else's 16 year old. So it kind of depends on the teen. Yeah. Right? And really teach them because they're going to hear that, th- that term emotionally mature, teach them what that is. It means when you are disappointed, how do you handle yourself? Do you throw a tantrum or do you deal okay with that disappointment and move on? Um, are you sassy? to your parents. That's not emotionally mature. Are you emotionally mature to when we ask you to do something or make sure your room's clean? If you want the ability to manage a phone, you need to show to us in all these areas that you're mature enough to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, phone school, so my husband used to be a professional snowboarder for 10 years, and he, he really is the face of phone school, and he teaches, and these kids just watch a few videos and it teaches them about addictions and um, of cell phones and dangers. And then they have the opportunity to have an educational piece where they research that and then present that research to their parents. They just watch a few video clips of him. And it can be done in a day. It can be done in a few hours. But I really encourage parents doing so. Because I think some parents do a little bit of a contract or they'll just hand over the phone and have a conversation. But this really holds the, the child or the teen accountable. Sure. Oh, phone school. I think we can all use that. Absolutely, Katie. Um, our, my last question is, it's never too early or too late to increase the peace within your home. Why do you say that? Oh, I say that because parents are so influential and they can strengthen their families. It doesn't matter if what age their child is. And I think that some parents go in with the best of intentions and then life happens and maybe they've developed patterns that they don't love or a relationship they're not loving. And I think that what we're doing as parents is the most important thing we'll do. And we can increase that peace, no matter the age of your child. Like, you can have a positive influence on your kids. Mm-hmm. I love that. Katie, that's yeah. so great. I think it's so, so important to remember just to be kind to yourself, too, and you're doing the best that you can. Yes, yes. We most need to be parents nicer are to doing, ourselves. Yes, yes. Most parents are doing an amazing job an amazing job and maybe there's just tweaking some things maybe we need to adjust our language or how we're responding or when we're teaching oftentimes when things go wrong parents teach in the moment and that's the exact wrong time to teach we need to teach when the child doesn't have high emotions so maybe we need to wait for a little by a while till they've calmed down they work through their disappointment and then we teach and just looking for the good you can increase that peace in your home if you look for the good and praise it. It's so easy to see what they're doing wrong or what bothers you, and you give your time and your energy to it versus what's going well. Because when things are going well, we're usually occupying ourselves with other things. Yep. But just taking that moment as you walk by a child and say, oh, I love the way you're coloring or I love the way you're playing with your animals, whatever it is. Oh, go parents. You're doing amazing. Just remember that. If you need a little bit extra help from Katie, Katie, where can we find you? Our uh, website is fullynested.com, and we're on Instagram at fullynested, and we are so happy to meet new parents and help them in this important role that they have. You're, you're just awesome. We just love we just love talking to you today. Thank you so much, Katie. Okay, I like to end it with our fresh five, five questions I like to ask you just off the top of your head. Let's start with, what do you have left on your bucket list? Oh, I, I'm going to say travel. I'd like to go to Ireland. Yeah, mm. let's do that. Fancy. That's a fun one. I love that. Um, who is someone you would love to have coffee, tea, hot chocolate with? Who's someone you'd love to have lunch with? Let's go with Abraham Lincoln. That would I'd, be maybe cool. Maybe it's because it's been President's Day and we've been talking about him in my family, but I'm just like, yeah, that guy, yeah. That would be a cool stage. conversation. I love that. Um, it's brunch. What do you order? Ooh, I'm going to be at Eva's Bakery. and oh, get. I love that place, yes, too. Yes, right? Um, let's get the... I don't even know what it's called. The br- oh. Is it the croque madame? No, it's the um, it's a flatbread. It's the brunch flatbread. Ooh, yum. Brunch flatbread. I Eva's. recommend it. Okay, I need to try that one. Favorite holiday? Christmas. You said that. I just heard your smile, and yeah. I heard that. Um, what TV show would you love to make a cameo on, last one? Is there a show that you love that you would just love to make an appearance on? I can't even think of one. Oh, my goodness. It's because you're not watching a lot of screens. I, I, it might be true, but <laughs> I'm going to say maybe like a fixer-upper show or like oh, a... Oh, that would be cool. Uh, yeah. My husband and I have flipped home, so maybe that's it. That would be very cool. I love that. Um, well, Katie, thank you so much again for giving us your wealth of knowledge. We appreciate it so much. And thank you for listening to our Fresh Off the Set podcast. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. And we will see you next week.
Congrats, you made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.